autism rates are going up exactly in step with the rise in glyphosate. It's quite, there's a stunning curve that shows um, children in first grade diagnosed with autism in the United States, plotting that over time against the amount of glyphosate being used on the on the core GMO crops over time those, and over the preceding four years. So from the age of two to the age of six in that child's life, integrated, all of that total, um, perfect match, exact match between those two curves. It's, it's a stunning correlation coefficient, 0.99 or something like that. You know, it, so correlation doesn't mean causation, but you know, sometimes it does. And when you see that kind of correlation, mm -hmm. you can't ignore it. You just can't. I, immediately, I was like, you know, this is just wow. I mean, first of all, believing it because of what I'd heard from the lecture. And then on top of that, finding this incredibly strong correlation. Because I'd been looking for correlations with other things. That's how I was figuring out what might be causal. But I was striking out in the sense that I couldn't explain the mechanism by which these things would cause what I was seeing with the autism. It was such a strange disease with so many interesting things going on. How could one chemical cause that? all that stuff was one of the big questions. He was the one who suggested to me that it might be substituting for glycine during protein synthesis. Glycine is an amino acid. It's the smallest amino acid. It's one of the 20 building blocks of proteins. That's the DNA code. I don't know how much people know about biology. They should know this because it's very basic. But you have that four-letter DNA code, the nucleotides that are in a, lined up like beads on a string, and you read them off three at a time. And the three has a specific code for a particular amino acid. And then from that code, the, the, the uh, protein is built with also beads on a string, attaching the amino acids together. That's a protein. That's called a peptide sequence, you know. And then the protein is a whole bunch of peptide sequences put together. And each of the proteins has incredibly specific things that it does that are amazing. I mean, they're the workhorses of the body. You know, they're enzymes and transporters and um, receptors, just all kinds of things that are proteins, even, even some hormones, you know. So um, like insulin is a protein. So they're very, very important in the body. They're really central to life and they're messed up by glyphosate through this mechanism of substituting for glycine. And if you read my book, you see that that's kind of the central story in my book. The problem with a lot of nutrition stuff is what, I, what I'm in mainly is they stop at the correlations and then they'll make recommendations based on that. And then we see a lot mm -hmm. of problems. Yeah, yeah, you can get confused with, it, especially with biological signaling, because you can find things that are higher under certain conditions. And you think if you can knock them down, mess up the enzymes that make that, uh, you'll you'll help the disease, but that doesn't turn out to be true in many cases. You know, homocysteine is a good example because homocysteine is elevated in the blood in association with heart disease. That's, it's a very strong risk factor for heart disease, and they've developed drugs that can knock it down. They're so excited they can bring homocysteine levels down. Every time they try to use them, they, they fail miserably. They make the disease worse, you know. So this is the kind of, and the Alzheimer's is another example, right? Amyloid beta. They're like, oh yeah, amyloid beta clearly causes Alzheimer's. Let's get rid of it. So they find these wonderful drugs, really expensive, like this new one. Mm -hmm. they, they get rid of the amyloid beta. They don't get rid of the Alzheimer's and make it worse usually. I mean, it's just a complete failure. 